Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me for another exciting edition of Diecast Emporium. In today's video, we're going to do a collection of something I'm extremely passionate about. Uh, just a little bit of personal reflection for one quick moment here. Many of you guys may know what I studied in college, uh, and what's been a big passion of mine over the years is military history. Uh, particularly, I love studying and examining lessons we've learned over the years and how to properly implement them in modern-day military tactics uh, and intelligence gathering. One of my favorite periods to study was World War II. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you my entire collection of World War II U.S. Army vehicles in 187 or HO scale. Now, for the most part, except for a couple, all of these vehicles will be in exact HO or 187 scale, and most of them are a mix of plastic and die cast, while some of them will be resin or plastic kits. So let's get the show on the road. The model you're looking at now is the Rocco Mini Tanks M29C Amphibious Weasel. So this little vehicle, and it is very small, uh, was a tracked vehicle that was made by Studebaker, and they would use these essentially to move guys and equipment from ship to shore, uh, usually in very, very shallow water. You can see it's got propellers on the back, it's got tracks, um, just a nice little small utility vehicle that was used uh, in every theater of operation, but really prominent in the ETO, or the uh, European Theater of Operations. Okay, number two, I would hesitant to, I would be hesitant to say that this is actually a model, but this is made by I believe the company is called Elko or Eco. It's E K O. Uh, this is the GMC Duck, which was a six wheel drive, two and a half ton or deuce and a half truck. This is labeled as one to eighty six scale, close enough for me. What's one scale marker off? So these ducks, again, another amphibious vehicle were essentially a two-and-a-half-ton truck with a boat package, if you want to call it. Again, usually from the ships to shore, where they would shuttle guys, gear, whatever you needed. Um, very effective in Normandy, for example. And uh, this, this model, though, is not of the highest quality. You can see that the plastic and green, everything is a little bit off-color. It does have wheels underneath it with a single propeller there. Uh, just just not a very appealing model. But again, I got this for $3 on sale at a local hobby sh store. And I was like, you know what? It would make a good addition to this collection. What's $3? Speaking of two and a half ton or deuce and a half trucks, let's move on to that. I have three examples to show you. All of these are by Johnny Lightning. Specifically, the military designation for these was the CCKW. Two and a half ton, six by six truck. Now, again, we all know these and we love these as the two and a half ton truck or the Jimmy. Both of those nicknames have followed these even into today. Now, you're not going to win any war or any conflict without logistics. So say what you want about the Sherman. Say what you want about the M1 Grand. Um, you would not have won the war without these trucks is what I'm saying. Or about the brave individuals who drove these in combat zones. Now, the three different ones I have to show you, this is obviously in a cargo troop configuration. This one is a fuel tanker, and this is obviously in an open configuration, same kind of troop transport, but you could put ammunition in the back. You could use this as a dump truck. Really, these were as versatile as what I'm trying to demonstrate with three different versions. And again, it bears repeating for, I believe, now the third or fourth time. Even today, you will not win any conflict or any war without logistics and communication and transport vehicles like this. So as glorious as the Sherman uh, or as great of a battle implement as the M1 Grand Rifle was, those are all great, but truthfully, in my mind, these vehicles won the Second World War. All right, moving on. Number five. We have the... Or I should say number four. I'm getting ahead of myself. We have the AlsaCast M3A1 White Scout Car. Now, this is a resin kit that I picked up from my friends at smallscalehobbies.com. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you are a beginner level, if you are a 
modeler that's just starting out and you have no experience with resin models at all, I would not recommend starting on this one. It is relatively simple to put together if you have some experience. However, the directions may be confusing to some that uh, have to kind of go their own way and make everything fit themselves. So that being said, if you are just starting out with models, and previously, like me, up till a couple years ago, most of your model collection has been ready built or assembled models, I would not, I would not recommend getting into uh, AlsaCast or Trident or any of the resin model kit manufacturers without first maybe building some cheap plastic models before you get into this stuff. Back to the real thing. So the white car, the scout car, these were used extensively, again, in both theater of operations in the Second World War. This one, again, outfitted with a machine gun on top. It does have a small gun in the back as well. Plenty of cargo room to carry some guys and stuff around. Um, it was fun building this. You can see there's a couple jerry cans on both sides. And the vehicle has a very similar style front end to that of a half track. And in fact, it even has the same front roller. Okay, now we can go on to number five. This kit, try and be as honest with you guys as I can. This kit was not at all enjoyable to build. This is made by Trident, which is also a resin kit, although Trident does make plastic kits and they make ready assembled models. This one in particular was a resin kit. None of the parts fit very well. The directions were horrendous. So this is really a making the best of a bad situation. If you look closely, the model does not sit completely evenly. Um, the bumper is slightly off. The doors, unfortunately, had to be glued shut because the hinges got damaged when separating them from the terrible mold that Trident chose to use for this. And that's a shame because they include great detail parts, interior detail parts, including stretchers, uh, bays, uh, seats for the driver and the medical personnel. But you really can't see that, at least with mine. I did add, again, some jerry cans on the fenders. There's a spare wheel on the left-hand side. Uh, and obviously, I printed out my own Army Medical Corps Red Cross stickers. So, it looks okay. It's satisfying. It's a good representation of the uh, Dodge WC-54 4x4 ambulance that was used all the way up to the start of the Vietnam War. But most people probably recognize them for either World War II or probably Korea, specifically from MASH. Um, but again, not a kit I would recommend for beginners. Okay, number six. Let's show some half tracks, shall we? So both of these are not exactly 187 scale. This one is built by Matchbox Collectibles, was built by Matchbox Collectibles, the better part of 20 years ago. This one is a existing mold that Johnny Lightning uses. Um, again, both of these are not exactly 187 scale, so at some point I would like to add a proper half track to my collection. This one has the mortar in the back and a machine gun up front. This one is the M16 version of the half track, which had the quad 50 cal anti aircraft setup. Um, but it is a pity that it doesn't rotate, it is a fixed model that is fixed in position. Personally, between the two, I actually like the Matchbox one better. You can see all the different cargo equipment that they've added. There's an antenna as well. The front wheels roll on the Matchbox one. Obviously, the tracks do not, but there is significantly more detail inside the Matchbox one than there is with the M16 version. Now, the Matchbox version, for those that are really into the designation of everything, uh, the Matchbox one is an M3A2 half track with the mortar, as I said before, while the Johnny Lightning is an M16 multiple gun motor carriage self propelled anti aircraft weapon with four 50 cal machine guns. Okay, those are some fun half tracks. Next up, we have a Rocco Mini Tanks ready-made assembled plastic model. Now, this model is pretty old. This casting has been around since the uh, 70s, I believe. This is a tracked, self-propelled artillery vehicle, 105, 155mm motor gun carriage, uh, as I said before. So this kind of has the, um, the same gun that the Long Tom has. Uh, that you'll 
see here just a minute because I have an example of that as well. But you can position the gun on this as well, whether it's in a carry or a transport or a rest position or if it's ready to fire. And you can lower the back part as well. Really a very, very simple tooling, very simple casting to this. You can update this. You can respray it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but the mold is very easy to work with since it is relatively inexpensive plastic. All right, next up. We have the Rocco Mini Tanks M4 High Speed Tractor. Great model. Love this one. This is another ready built or assembled kit. Pulling the aforementioned 155 millimeter long tom gun. So let's go back to the M4 for just a minute. This was used as an artillery tractor. So essentially, you would see it doing this exact application during World War II. It was introduced in 1943 and it was built by Alice Chalmers. Now the 155 millimeter cannon, as you can see here, could be outfitted on the 40, the, the M4 tracked self-propelled, or it could be pulled in this trailer setup, again, depending on what the application needed. Great model here uh, by Rocco Mini Tanks, and it actually comes with the tracks colored a different color, at least mine did. And this one comes with the tires in a black color, where the rest is the standard olive drab green. So these two look, I can't tell you enough how great these look together, particularly if you have a fleet of these getting ready to set up a, uh, a forward firing position. All right. Let's go back to some wheeled vehicles for just a moment while we take a look at the Rocco Mini Tanks M8 light armored car. Now these were built by Ford and you can credit the British with giving these the nickname the Greyhound. Um, again, another ready built model by Rocco Mini Tanks. The only thing that I did was respray this with Tamiya Olive Drab from the World War II era and give it a aerial antenna. This has the um, machine gun up on top, and then you also have a small cannon as well. These were so popular that in the real world, there are some countries that are still using World War II era M8 light armored car Greyhounds. All right, now on to one of my favorite vehicles from this era. Also by Rocco Mini Tanks, this is the M7 Priest. You heard that right, the Priest, which was a 105 millimeter self-propelled howitzer. So imagine this with me for just a moment. Close your eyes, try to imagine that you are a grunt in World War II, your buddies are getting blown up, killed around you, and you finally get some downtime. Maybe you're popping open a can of grub. You're sitting around, you see one of these roll by, the guy next to you goes, man, that thing to the right of that gun, man, that looks like the thing that a priest stands behind during Sunday Mass. Yeah, let's call it a priest. It's that kind of humor that I really appreciate, and it's just hilarious. The, the humor of military individuals is, is second to none. Um, so that's how this vehicle got its name, really. This piece right here is the, the area, if you're not Catholic, that a priest would stand behind and give his uh, readings on Sunday, and it looks very similar to that. So... The M7 105mm self-propelled howitzer forevermore came to be known as the M7 Priest. All right. Now, back to an Alsa cast resin kit. Unlike the Trident resin kit for the Dodge Ambulance, this I enjoyed every second of the build process. Now, this has opening flaps so you can close this one open it i have this one up i'm still working on the other one which is why it's not attached and then there's two flaps right here as well that you can either have closed as i do or you can have these opened as well uh, the m5 a1 stewart has a has three rather 30 millimeter machine guns and the main gun is a 37 millimeter gun this is, a, this is a great model. 
But more over than the weaponry and the way this looks is this specifically, this model has an optional hedgerow cutter, which of course I chose to fit on this, being that I depict my vehicles uh, usually in the Eastern, the, the European theater of operations. So if you're not familiar, they would put this device, they would fabricate these dev this device from loose steel or whatever was around, and they'd put them on Shermans, they'd put them on Stuarts, they'd put them on tracked vehicles usually to get through the dense hedgerows of Normandy. And they would just drive these through so that they could create paths uh, that weren't already there. So that's what a hedgerow cutter was. I just think it looks fantastic. Uh, obviously, I sprayed this with Tamiya as well. Just a great looking model. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments section below. But this is by far, I think, one of my favorites that's in my collection. All right. So that was the M5A1 Stuart light tank. How about we take a look at the backbone of the U.S. military armored fleet during the Second World War? And that, of course, was the M4 Shermans. So I have three versions to show you. Two of these uh, are by Rocco Mini Tanks. The third one is by Heiser Models Incorporated. Now, Sherman's usually had a 75mm gun or sometimes a 76mm gun and either a 50 or 30 caliber, caliber machine gun for its secondary armament. I have plans for each and every one of these. As you can probably tell throughout the video, none of these models are what I would consider showroom worthy or finished yet. Many of them still need their ally stars on them or may need some antennas, may need some finishing paint work, uh, or as is the case with the tanks. I plan on adding some of these. Perfect time to get these in. This is the Herpa Mini Tanks, Rocco Mini Tanks sandbags that I could put on the front. They would do that to help deflect tank rounds, help increase the armor that was on the front or the back of these tanks. And then also I have this also cast accessories piece that I plan on putting on some of these as well. So please bear that in mind when you're looking at these. So plan for one of these. I would like to fabricate because no one has made to date a deep water wading kit that you would see on some of the Shermans that would wade ashore uh, during the Normandy invasion. Essentially, they would be large snorkels on the back of these. So that's my plan for one of them. My plan for another one is to add the bulldozer configuration on the front. And then for the third one, I plan just to leave it as a standard Sherman setup just to be uh, very representative of what a standard Sherman would have looked like in the Second World War. Next thing I want to mention is many people get confused as to what the primary application for a tank crew and a tank was during the Second World War, particularly in U.S. Army doctrine. These were never designed, tanks specifically, were never designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an enemy tank. I know that may sound shocking, particularly what the media portrays, but Shermans were designed to support infantry. They were never designed to go up against Panzers or Tigers or whatever. If the U.S. encountered an enemy tank, we were to pull back to a safe defensive position and radio in one of these, the suspense builds. This is an M36 Jackson tank destroyer, although it depends on who, you, which historian you talk to. Many people say the name Jackson never really was associated with this until the end of the war, but no matter, the M36 tank destroyer, this had, unlike the Sherman 75mm gun, this had a whopping 90mm gun and a 50 cal machine gun, but more importantly than that, you see this? This is what the Russians really can be accredited with. This had slope armor, which helped deflect incoming tank rounds. These things are what was initially designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemy tanks. Now, obviously, as the war progressed and the Sherman gun got more powerful and the armor got a little bit better and the tank crews got more apt at tank-on-tank -tank warfare tactics, i.e. where to effectively engage German tanks and take them out instead of watching their rounds bounce off the front of them, the Jacksons weren't necessarily used all the time. But important to note, you may win a bar bet here and there, that initially at the start of the war, tanks 
The Shermans were not designed at all to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemy vehicles. So, this model, the M36, made by Boley, it's still in production now under the Walther's Scene Master name. Again, essentially the same mold. Only thing I did to mine was, again, spray it in the Tamiya Olive Drab so that it matches most of these other vehicles. I do plan on adding the stars. The undercarriage I detailed with black so it looks like it has the proper color that would have been on the tracks. And also colored the end of the barrel on the turret black to give it that illusion that the end of the barrel is hollow. So that will conclude this video on my 187 or HO scale U.S. Army World War II military vehicle collection. Before we sign off, obviously there are some notable absences from this collection. I know what you're thinking, the first one, why, Tommy, don't you have a Jeep in this video? Well, there's a very simple answer for that. I wish I had a better excuse. I don't have one. That's right. I don't have a 187 scale uh, World War II era Jeep. They're actually relatively hard to get a hold of. You can get plenty of Jeeps from Vietnam and newer, but you, at least for me, I am having issue finding a World War II era Jeep. So if you guys enjoy this style of video, I do plan on updating these like I do most of my other collection with update collection videos in the future. So let me know if you enjoyed this. I will have no issue as I gain more of these in my collection to do a collection video update further on in the future. Besides a Jeep, I would love to add the Dragon Wagon, which of course was the low boy transporter that hauled around tanks, for example, during World War II. I would also like to pick up an LVT, or the Landing Vehicle Tract, um, yes, that the Marines most famously used, but the Army did use them uh, in Italy and crossing the Rhine, for example, and to some extent in North Africa. So I would like to add one of those to my collection as well. So really, Jeep... Um, LVT, or the Amtrak, um, Dragon Wagon, and then maybe a proper to scale half track because as the ones that I've shown as samples in this video, they're not really 187 scale, they're just placeholders for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, this has been Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like. Until next time, take care, be safe. I'll see you in the next review.